Wow, this car is really running hot. Oh, coolant level looks good. A lot of people think that when you have a vehicle running warm, it's a coolant issue, which in actuality, it could be something electrical. Let's go check it out. one Auto sells many different car and truck parts for your vehicle, including this coolant fan, which could be related to why this engine's running warm. If you need truck or car parts for your vehicle, make sure you click the link in the description and head over to one autocom Some of the things you don't normally think about when your engine's running hot is how it affects fuel mileage. The ideal temperature for the engine to run is 210 degrees Fahrenheit. If the engine is much hotter than that, the computer is gonna be compensating, dumping more fuel into the engine that's wasted. It's not even being used properly, and you're gonna feel it in the accelerator. It's gonna be sluggish. It's not gonna move as quick as usual. If you notice your engine's running warmer than normal, it might be time to look at the coolant fans. Let's talk about some of the symptoms. You may notice the temperature gauge. You may notice a warning light. Steam may be coming up from under the hood or you may even notice coolant pouring on the ground. And the major symptom you're gonna notice with faulty radiator fans is when you're coming to a stop or the vehicle is just idling, it overheats, but as you move, it cools down a little bit. Maybe it's not overheating while you're on the highway or it's just running warm, but it definitely overheats when the vehicle is not moving because you're still getting airflow through the radiator when the vehicle moves. So we suspect there's a problem with the coolant fans. So the first thing we want to check is the coolant level. Somewhere in the system is a fan switch, whether it's on the engine side or in the radiator side. And if the coolant level isn't up to that switch, it's not going to accurately turn on the fans when they need to be turned on. So let's check the coolant level. Make sure the engine's cold. You never want to open the cap when it's hot. Gently grab the upper radiator hose. If the upper radiator hose is cool enough to touch and you could squeeze it and make sure there's no pressure in there, then you can open the cap. Again, carefully open the cap. And take a look, make sure the coolant's right up to the radiator cap. And if you have a reservoir, that's separate. Some vehicles don't have radiator caps. You want to check the reservoir. Make sure there's plenty of coolant in that. Our coolant level's fine, so now we're going to take a look at the fans themselves. Visually look at the fans. Make sure there's nothing obvious, nothing broken. Make sure they're plugged in. If the connector itself has popped off, then obviously they're not going to work. But with the key off or the key out of the vehicle, you can take a look at the fan, see if the fan itself spins. You want to spin it in the direction that it normally spins and make sure there's no excessive noise. If the fan itself is frozen, then that's not going to be good. The fans are going to need power to run, so you want to check the fuses and the relays. So find the relay center in your vehicle, pop the cover off, and on the back, sometimes there's a key to tell you which fuse or relay is which. Now we want to see if we can command the fans on or off using a scan tool. Most of the times you can at least view the coolant temperature in the vehicle and monitor that while the engine's running. The fan should come on at a certain temperature. The computer will command the fans on. It'll turn the fan relay on. Every vehicle is slightly different. They could come on at 230 degrees or they could come on at 180 degrees. Depending on the vehicle, you're going to have to check out that information. Another way you can check the fans without this and without running the vehicle for too long is starting the vehicle and turning the AC on max. That should command both of the fans on and then you can check them that way. With all those tests, you tried to command the fan on and it's still not working. What you want to do is disconnect the connector for the fan. There should be a two wire connector. Every fan just needs power and ground to work. While you're commanding the fan on, take a test light and go in between the two wires and make sure the test light comes on. If the test light comes on, then the fan is no good. There's a fault in the fan system and it needs to be replaced. Just to show you how simple this circuit is, there's two wires going to the fan. You have your ground wire and your positive wire, and you could even bench test this just like this. Put power to it and it comes on. 
When you need a fan for your vehicle, make sure you click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. And we're going to switch it on and you'll see how it spins. Are you serious? The battery's dead. Some of the things you don't normally think about when your engine is running hot. <laughs> oh, you weren't ready. Okay.